Hello world, my name is Nick360 and welcome back to Prison Architect. In today's video, we're going to talk about escape mode. To begin escape mode, you go to main menu by clicking this icon here and it's under extras and right here is escape mode and escape mode steam workshop. So if you've built a prison, you can choose to play as a prisoner in the prison and try and escape from it. Or you can do it from one of the many different prisons on the workshop. So online, there's many people have their prisons that they uploaded for everyone to see and you can play as a random one of those. So I'm going to pick one of my prisons that I've built specifically to show you escape mode. So I hit escape mode and I'm going to select one of my prisons. I've called it paint it gray hard. Now this is a very challenging prison to escape from and I specifically made it this way. And so if you can escape from this prison, you should be able to escape from almost any prison. So I'm going to load it up. And when you begin escape mode, you get brought in as a prisoner from their truck. Now you're going to want to be able to speed up time because speeding up time will help you will help you be more efficient with your time. So you can focus on more fun things like uh, stealing things and getting into a whole bunch of trouble. And you're going to want to basically create as much trouble as possible because the more trouble you get into, the more reputation points you have. So right now I am this character called Wien, either Wiener or Weiner, depending on how you want to look at it. And right next to it is something called rep points and that's how much reputation I've earned. If I click this reputations button, I can spend some of my reputation on different traits which will make me stronger in some way. First trait is called strong, it will make me do more damage during fights. Tough is probably the most important one, which means you can withstand more damage when you get hit. There's deadly, which gives you a chance to kill the person you're attacking instantly. There's quick, which makes you run around faster, also a very useful one. Instigator, that one's not super useful, but it causes other people around you to be more likely to fight and Skilled Fighter, which allows you to not only last in fights longer, but also steal weapons more efficiently. While I was explaining the basics of rep points, a guard came, took me, and brought me into my cell. And as soon as you get to your cell, you can move around freely and you won't have handcuffs on anymore. So until a guard comes and picks you and puts you in your cell, you really can't do anything. And that's why speeding up time is important, because you can't do anything until you get to your cell, so you might as well speed up that time. Now this is my cell and it's a holding cell, which means all the other cells are being taken. Now the first thing you need to do is to figure out a way to get some kind of rep points. And I found that the easiest way to get rep points really early on is to go and find a shower. And I know from experience that there's showers at the bottom of this cell here. Now you get rep points for doing things you're not supposed to do. So causing damage to one of these showers heads will give me rep points. But every time I damage a new shower head, that will also give me another rep point. And I can keep doing this for all the shower heads and it should get a lot of rep points. However, as soon as I hit the first shower head, the guards are going to see me and try and stop me. So I have to run away from the guards and try not to get attacked while just damaging as many shower heads as possible. So I'm going to run away from these guards because they're moving that way. So I'm going to go to this kind of block here where there isn't any, you know, oh, this actually, this, this person right here got in a fight. So that's not good. It, all my guards have tasers. So... It can be very hard to early on because tasers will knock you up pretty much in one hit. So, okay, I'm going to attack this shower head here. I'm going to move on to this, this one here. And I got some more rep points. And I got taken out. But I got three rep points. I built my presence so that I don't have to wait for a super long time. So I can have a choice. Either way, I can wait through solitary confinement. And that's going to be right below. I built them right close to the showers. Or I can click this button to skip punishments. And I'll spend one rep point in order to skip punishment. So you can save up your rep points in order to spend them. Now I'm just going to skip the punishment, which will send me back to my cell. Um, and I'm going to send one on tough and one on deadly. So now I can probably withstand maybe one taser shot if I get lucky, um, which is good. I'm basically going to repeat this strategy one more time, but now that I'm tough, it should work a little bit better because I'll be able to last longer before I get tased. All right, so back in the showers, I hit this shower head and I'm moving on three, four, five, and I, I stop and there's no guards around. I can hit space and I'll end the fight. And so now I can just walk away and I can basically pretend that that wasn't me. That was someone else. So I still get the reputation points, but because I hit space and there's no guards around, the, the fight's over. There is no problem. And so now I can actually spend my reputation points. So I can be strong, quick, skilled fighter, and I might as well spend it on instigator. So now I have one point in all of my skill points. So now I have all these cool traits. Now there is another way you can spend rep points, but I'm going to need a little bit more first. So I'm going to get some more rep points by hitting these shower heads. And there's no guards around, so you just have to stand still. 
And if it says end fight, you just hit space and the fight's over and you get your rep points. Now I have five rep points. You can recruit people to basically be on your team. So you right click when you're standing next to them. And I'm going to right recruit Tim Page, who based on his tattoos is a gang member, which is probably going to be good for me. And there we go. Now I have two people and I can swap between them using Q and E. Or I can just click on the person's face in the corner. Then I can play as them. So now I have two people. And so now I have a, like, basically a small army. And I can also spend reputation points on him as well. So I can make Tim tougher as well. So now we both are very strong in terms of being able to withstand damage, particularly tasers, because all my guards have tasers. So now that I got a small group of people who I support, I'm going to switch back, switch back to Winner or Wiener or Weiner, whatever you want to look at it. I'm going to want to find a weapon. And there's weapons all over. And the, the trick to this game mode is finding where you can steal stuff that is useful to you. Because once you get a weapon, you can start killing people or damaging them a lot. And that's a really good way to get rep points. So normally, um, see the kitchen here, normally doesn't have very many guards in it and has a lot of cooks. But kitchens are a good place to get knives. And also normally you're allowed to go into the kitchen. See how this area is striped with red lines? That means I'm not permitted to go into there. So I'm going to unfollow page by clicking toggle follow so now he's not following me so even though he's still part of my team i'm saying go away do something else i'm going to do something on my own and so i'm going to try and go into the kitchen it's so, okay and as soon as i go into the kitchen these guards are going to notice hey you're not supposed to be in the kitchen and they'll start basically attacking me um another way you can get into the kitchen is just wait for the door to open when one of the cooks goes through so as soon as cook goes to the door the door will open and i'll be able to go through so here we go got some cook coming i'm going to go through and immediately i'm going to get attacked and taste so yeah, that was not a good plan, but I got I got a rep point for being so bold as to go into the kitchen. I'm gonna skip punishment. I'm back in the holding cell. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for Paige to follow me. So I just whistled for Paige to follow me. And you you can't hear the sound, but it makes a whistling noise. All right. So the common room you can't steal anything from the common room, um, but you can steal stuff from storage, which is why I blocked it off, saying prisoners are not allowed to go in there. So instead of going to the kitchen to find a weapon, we're going to go into a different room. Now there's a good place to find a lot of cool stuff is a visitation room. You can find a lot of cool stuff in visitation room. Storage rooms are a really good way to get a lot of cool stuff. For example, I can get this lighter here, and by right-clicking and holding, I can steal this lighter. Now I've hit Q, it'll switch to page, but if I was just by myself, Q would have hid the lighter. And I hit Q to go back to page. You can also just select this other item here. You can hold up to two items. And there, I'm not holding the lighter anymore. You, or at least you can't see me holding the lighter. But if I go through metal detector, it'll probably go off. Nope, didn't go off. So the lighter did not have enough metal in it to set off the metal detector. However, there's a lot of things in the workshop that will set off the metal detector. And the one I'm looking for is a drill. The drill is by far the best weapon in this game at rate right after release. I don't know if there's going to be an update sometime in the future. Here is a drill, so right click and hold the drill. And now Wiener has a drill, and there's another drill down there. So Paige is going to pick this up. And so now we have, we each have a drill. Now this is an armed guard, so this is a guard with a gun. Normally you don't mess with him, but then again, normally you don't have a drill. And another buddy who's willing to back you up. So we're going to attack him, and he's going to try shooting his gun at us. And if we both don't die right away, we'll basically have control of this workshop. So we're going to attack him, and boom, he's dead. And he dropped a gun, so I could I could swap out my lighter for a gun. Um, gun here. And now I can start shooting people with a shotgun, which actually isn't as good. Like I, I think the drill is a better weapon. Uh, now um, we're getting attacked, and we got tased. But in the meantime, because we, we, we stole all this stuff and killed all these guards, we got a bunch of reputation points. So I'm going to skip the punishments. And actually, you can increase your toughness even more so. You can do this up to two times. So this is just normal t um, normal strongness, normal toughness, and then there's extra strong, extra tough, extra deadly. So extra tough would mean I'm even more resistant to, you know, tasers, which means I could probably take a taser or two before I go down, which, well, just makes me all the more deadly because, you know, you saw how fast I took out that, that guy with a gun. Like, if you can take out a guy with a gun while he's on duty, oh, and there, there he is, he's being taken off to the morgue, which is outside. So let's look at some other things you can do in escape mode. So let's say I want to take this scissors here, and I want to use it as a weapon, but I don't want to use it right now. I want to store it for later. So I'm going to go into the cell block here, which is not a cell block that I'm currently living in. So this, these are none, of, none of these are my cells. You can right-click over a bed or a bookshelf or a TV, and when you right-click, it'll snatch the concert band. So now that scissors is there for me to use, 
and but I don't I can now walk through a metal detector if I wanted to I can go through a metal detector and I'm not holding scissors anymore so I'm fine I'm safe um, here there's a metal detector I'm safe I can go through many times and I don't have this weapon so you can go after a fight a lot of uh, if you get in a big fight with guards guards will drop keys which will allow you to open doors and will drop batons which is a pretty decent weapon it isn't a great weapon but it's better than your fists so I can keep going in this mail room keep looking for scissors there's one up here I can steal the scissors and I can go back to the cell and I can put it in a different bed. There we go. And now if a guard were to search me, or I were to get in a fight, here, I'm just going to get in a fight, uh, and I surrender. I hit space and I surrender. So if, if there are guards around and you hit, try and end the fight, that's basically you surrendering, which is you giving up. Well, I'm just going to skip through the punishment by spending a rep point. Um, but now if I were to go back, those scissors are still going to be there. Because those are not my cell. So even if if the way the game is set up, if you get in a fight, often you will have your cell searched. Well, that's not my cell, so that one's not going to be searched. So you can store weapons away for later, or keys, or, or guns. You can literally take a small stash of st shotguns and store them up for later. So you can get and you can use that time to then build up a huge army. You can have up to ten people in your squad, so you can have t uh, nine other people following you. The lighter is really powerful, but it's very dangerous. Um, and also, there's there's ways for builders to prevent the damage from lighters. But what lighters do is, well, they set things on fire. And if there isn't sprinklers everywhere, so this room has three sprinklers on this top room, they are going to stop fires pretty effectively. Without these sprinklers, in order to stop the fire, the firemen have to come. And you can actually kill the firemen, and so the fire will just spread through the entire prison, and it will actually burn down walls. So you could probably burn through this wall here, and I could basically be ready to escape by burning through this wall. But unfortunately, there's sprinklers here. If you want to prevent lighters from causing huge problems in your prison, you know, just put sprinklers everywhere, which is what I've done in this prison here. So I don't want you just to set a fire to everything. So I'm just going to show off the lighter real quick. So the, all these tables are made out of wood, so they're all eligible to be set on fire. And so I'm going to click on it, and boom, now it's on fire. And I got one taser shot, and I survived that. And I can just keep setting things on fire. And there's no limit to how many times you can set things on fire. So now I'm setting this whole room on fire, and if you walk in the fire, it'll damage you, but all the sprinklers are going off now, or at least that one is. That's going to prevent the fire from spreading everywhere throughout the prison. So I'm just going to try and leave now. I've done my damage in this room. Um, I can also, if you get stuck in a door, you can try, well, I didn't mean to burn it down. You can try switching to your fists and punching through the door, and if you're strong and tough, and you can actually punch down the door. And you can see I'm just taking all these taser shots, but I'm extremely tough, so that makes it very hard for me to go down. I'm just going to take this um, piece of glass, and I'm going to start... Oh, that's not a piece of glass, that is a saw. It can be a little tricky if there's two items right next to each other, which one to pick up. I believe you pick up the one that is the closest to where you are right now. There you go. And now I have this piece of glass, or shank. And now I have um, keys, and I have a shotgun. I can switch to the lighter. Um, and there we go, I got keys and a gun. So I'm going to try to leave now, and actually my plan now is to save these weapons for later, but I almost died in the process. If I'd taken any more damage, I, that would have killed me and I would be dead. And if I didn't have a squad mate, that would have been game over for me. So armed guards make things really tough. And uh, here you go. The firemen are putting out the fire, but right now it actually um, did some damage to this wall here. I don't know if there's enough damage to completely destroy the wall, such a point that there'd be a hole in it that you can walk through. But if... If you can't control fires, or if the prison is designed in such a way that the fires aren't controllable, then you can burn down walls so so badly that there will be huge holes in the walls you can just walk through. However, the fires will still be going, and so you'll probably die going through the fires. So that's the big problem. I'm going to skip the punishment. I, again, I almost just died there. Sheesh. All right, it's sleep time. So when you're in, you have to pay attention to the regime, the schedule. And you have to follow the schedule. If you're not following the schedule, you're going to get in trouble. And you're going to be forced to try and follow the schedule. So sleep time means you have to stay in your cell and sleep. So you have to find an open bed. And instead of skipping punishments, you hit sleep. And it'll sleep till the night. So now it's going to be free time. Now in the morning, it's free time. That's what my schedule is. So now free time means I can go anywhere that I'm allowed to go. Uh, so I can't go to the security room. but I, and I can't go in this clean cupboard. But I can go. And let's say I wanted to pick up the scissors that I stored for later. I can do that. Now I'm going to try and show you one alternate tactic for escaping the prison before I actually escape. And I don't prefer this method because it's really slow, but it is can be more effective. So it's, a, it's sort of low risk, low reward. And we're going to go back to the workshop. And instead of looking for a drill, well, I can 
Well, I'll pick up the drill just for a backup measure. If I can't find... Oh, two drills. Okay, now I have to take these two drills because they're just so good. All right, I'm going to try and sneak around this corner. Um, I can sneak so I don't actually walk through the metal detector. There we go. I didn't walk through this metal detector. And I didn't walk through that metal detector. So you can kind of sneak through metal detectors. Um, so we're going to go back to my cell. I, don't, I think it has to be your cell. But you can dig tunnels. Yeah, you can't dig tunnels in someone else's cell. You have to be in your cell. So my cell, oops, that's a, ooh, I almost just walked through the metal detector. Um, walking through the metal detector is fine if there's no guards around. But if there's any guards around, they'll try and search you if they see you going through a metal detector. So you can just avoid the metal detectors by going around it. There we go. So I gotta go back to my cell. Now I'm gonna dig a tunnel. And you dig a tunnel in the toilet. Um, because that's where the pipes are. So that's the easiest way to breach through the surface of the ground. Um... Uh oh, I'm being searched. Oh, I walked through this metal detector here. Dang it. And so I'm going to be searched, and they're going to find both my drills, and I'm going to get in trouble for it. Uh, and I got in trouble for it. So what I probably should have done if you're getting searched and you have something you know you're not supposed to have is you can start a fight right then and there. And at least you get one rep point, and then you can use that one rep point to skip your punishment. So one second, I'm going to go back to the workshop, and I'm going to find a non-metal tool that I can use for digging. One note is that if you have quick... If you spend your rep points on quick, if you hold shift, you'll run. But you can only run for a short period of time, and you can't do it when you're in combat. You can't do it when you're fighting someone. So that's really nice for making you get around the prison fast. And of course, you can be extra quick, which means you can last, you can you can run for a lot longer. So we're going to find a non-metal tool that we can use to dig. And I, I let, those drills are good, but this is a wooden pick. So it's just a pick made of some wood kind of lashed together. And, well, it's wooden, so it's not going to set off metal detectors. So I'm just going to hide it by switching to my fists. Uh, hammer, that's metal. Saw, that's metal. Drill, that's metal. All right. We can look for and we can hold two of them. So I'm going to grab two of them. I'm going to keep searching. Here's another one. And, of course, the items appear at randomly. So you just keep walking around until you find it. So I'm actually going to deliberately go through this metal detector. And it can tell that I went through the metal detector, but it didn't go off, which is to say it didn't find anything metal on me, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So it's wood, and I can go through it. So I'm going to go back to my holding cell to the right over here. And now I am, oops, no, oh, i got one more room to go. Now I'm in my cell. So I can kind of see where guards can, um, where guards are, and I want to try and dig a tunnel. But I only want to do it when there's no guards around. So that might be really challenging because there's that's a kennel right there, so a lot of guards are going to hang out there. And there's a guy patrolling here. So this is actually really well designed in terms of making it really hard to dig, which is another reason why I don't like digging. It's because it's very easy to stop digging just by having just any guard walk by, even occasionally. You know, makes it very likely that digging is going to mess up. Now I'm going to store one of the pickaxes in this under this bench right here. So if I do mess up this digging, I'll have another pickaxe. I won't have to go back to the workshop. And actually. You can use storing contraband as a way to deliver contraband from one person to another. So I want to maybe give a pick to my friend Paige over here because he's in a more traditional cell block, which will be easier to hide the hide the pick. So I'm just going to steal the pick over here, switch back to my hands, and there we go. Now Paige has the pick. I don't know why I put solitary doors everywhere. Oh, well, the reason I put solitary doors everywhere is because they're much harder to punch down. There we go. So this one's my cell. So I'm going to use the pick on this cell over here. So it's going to be much easier to hide it because I can kind of sneak over here and then it's hard for guards to see it. Now I'm going to switch to the pick. And if you're holding a, um, a digging tool, and you can tell if it's a digging tool by hovering over it, if you have a digging tool and you're standing over the toilet in your cell, you can hit right click to start a tunnel. But if a guard sees you starting a tunnel, the tunnel will be exposed. So you kind of have to look. Do you see any guards nearby? I don't see any guards nearby. I'm going to start the tunnel. I'm going to right click again to go inside the tunnel. And now I can dig. And you dig by holding left click, which is the opposite of what you used to enter the tunnel. So I'm going to hold left click, and I'm digging. Chunk, 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 chunk. I'm following this water pipe right here. I don't know, think it's strictly faster, but right there. And now I can actually stash contraband in this tunnel as well. So I'm going to go into this cell over here. And it's harder to dig through walls. So if you can figure out a way to avoid walls, that will make tunneling a lot faster. For example, if I just go along the cell here, it should be a little bit faster. And of course, I can just speed up time. So chink, 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 chink. Um, there we go. And then it's going much faster than that now that I'm not going through walls. But however, the pick doesn't last forever. And so I just used it all up. So I broke it, and it doesn't last forever. Now, when I leave this hole, I'm going to right-click the exit. Uh, if there's a guard watching me exit the hole, then the tunnel will be exposed and it won't work anymore and they'll fill it up and I'll have to do the whole tunnel over again. 
Um, someone's taking a shower because I know where that's where the showers are. So I'm just going to guess and, and then and see it's free time. So all the guards are walking around and I wasn't caught. So now I'm safe. So I'm going to go and get another two picks and I can keep digging my tunnel and I can actually dig a tunnel all the way through this cell block here, all the way down and right outside. And then I can just make a bait for it or I can steal some keys and store them so they have them in my tunnel. And then once I have the keys and get outside, I can just use the tunnel to open the, the door to leave. So that's one way you can use tunnels to escape. It's a lot slower, but it's a little bit more tricky. And so really hard prisons, tunneling may seem to be a much better option because armed guards are a big pain. Now, the drill is a digging tool. I'm going to try using the drill. And because this cell, his cell is a lot closer, I won't have to go through that one metal detector that got me busted the last time. And even though I'm holding this drill and everyone can see it, or at least the player can see it, um, the guards won't see it. So you can just kind of walk around with this stuff here. And so oh, that's my cell right there. And you can see the tunnel that I left in there. So I'm going to look for guards, make sure there's no guards nearby, enter my tunnel. Oh, okay, I didn't enter my tunnel. Instead, I exposed my tunnel by attacking, by hitting the wrong button. So I'm going to end the fight, which means I'm not fighting anymore. But here they go. Now, the, now that the tunnel is exposed, the workers are going to fill up the tunnel. And I have to start the whole thing over again. I'm also going to hide this drill and this pick for now, just in case I get searched. Because if you get caught escaping, some prisons can choose to say, hey, search the prisoner and search their cell. So I'm going to try again. All right. So this time, I'm going to hold right click, drill, 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 drill. There we go. Drill, 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 drill. And eventually the drill will break um, or run out of battery, however we want to look at it. Uh, and then I just got to go and grab the wooden pick. Oh, there we go. The drill is used up. And I grab the pick. I go down. And then I use the pick. There we go. And I'm digging a tunnel. Um, as you can see, though, the tunnel is very easy to expose. And it can be very easy to just miss a guard when you're coming up from a tunnel. But if I wanted to dig up the tunnel. When you're at the end of the tunnel, you can right click to dig up, which will give a hole upwards. And obviously, I know I'm in the shower block right now. So I'm not going to want to do that when I'm in the shower block. But when I'm outside, that's how you get out of the tunnel. All right, exit tunnel. And there we go, exited the tunnel successfully. I'm going to get winner to follow me and we are going to escape. So I could spend time um, killing people going on a rampage and getting as many points as possible. But I'm going to try and escape um, just as quickly as I can. So I'm going to get the drill here and then winner should be following me and there he is. I can flip to him and I'm going to find a drill for him. And of course, I'm speeding up time just a little bit. There's another pick, but I don't want picks. I want drills because they're strong. Um, and we're going to either escape or die trying. And either way, it'll be the same. So, okay. And I'm going to kill this guy here. There we go. And I'm going to grab a key. Oops. And swap out the key. And I have a shotgun. And I'm going for it. I have a key so I can just walk through doors. And I died, but I can flip to him. Oh, and he's unconscious. Dang it. So I need to, uh, well, it didn't work out very well. And so that goes to show kind of how strong the prison is built. That I made the workshop very secure and I put armed guards everywhere. Of course, there wasn't armed guards. I would have lasted a lot longer because I wouldn't have been shot in the face with a shotgun. Another possibility is you can actually just try and kill as many people as possible. If you kill enough people, uh, the morgue will be f overfilled. And when the morgue's completely full, then it's really hard for workers to empty the morgue because then there's like a huge backlog of bodies that they have to pick up so they don't know, they kind of mess up. Then there's such a long line of ambulances leading up to the prison that the, the front door is always open because there's always, a, uh, always an ambulance right there forcing the door open. Guards are the toughest because they have these vests, but these workmen, most of the workmen, like this janitor here, is not quite as tough, so it's much easier to stab to death even with the scissors. However, if there's a lot of guards nearby and they see you do it, you're going to get in trouble. So I'm going to skip punishments and I'm going to go through reputation. I'm going to go through deadly and make him super tough. So he wasn't super tough before, but now he is a lot tougher. So he can actually take, take a hit. And he's deadly now too. So there's a chance that I, he'll kill people in one hit. So you go for people that are much weaker than you because um, life isn't fair. And this is a prison simulator. All right. And I got some damage, but... I have enough to research more reputation. So that's what you just keep doing. You keep attacking people and killing people. Um, you get more reputation, and that makes you stronger. And then you just keep punching people. And eventually, you'll be super overpowered. Oops. 
And again, you can die. If, if you get take too much damage at any one point in time, you'll die. Okay, skip punishment. And of course, if you ever struggle, you can always just use the shower technique, which is damage as many showers as possible. And now that I'm super tough, uh, it's going to be really easy to just keep avoiding them and run around them, damage as many shower heads as possible. And that way I can be super tough, super strong, super quick, super uh, deadly, uh, expert, skilled fighter, Batman, ninja, whatever, you know. And I, I can just keep damaging shower heads. And here's damages shower head. Damages how I'm barely even injured, too. Oh, and you can surrender if you're worried about dying, and then I'll just switch you. Oh, actually, I did die. Whoops. Yeah, three people's shotguns. That probably was going to result in my death. So if you have someone who's dead, and you don't have to worry about them anymore. You can just hit X, and they're not going to be in your squad anymore. And I'm just going to try and leave, and uh, let's see how this goes. All right, I managed to get through the front door, and I got beaten unconscious. So the only reason I made it that far is because I was extremely tough. So maybe if I'm extremely fast as well. So I'm going to skip punishments. Reputation. Um, I'm going to make me strong, deadly, and quick. There we go. And maybe if I can find one set of keys, then I won't have to wait for the doors to open. So I'm just going to find a lone guard. Is it, that's a, great. Is when you can find one guard all by themselves. So often look for a room. There we go. Here's one guard all by himself, and he's deployed in this room. So I'm just going to attack him. And I'm going to kill him. I'm going to take his keys and his baton. And I don't have to actually be holding the keys to use them. So now I'm just going to make a run for it. And hopefully I'll make it. All right, here we go. And I'm opening the doors with the keys. So run, run for it, run for it, run for it, run for it, run for it. All right, run for it. Ah, uh, run. And if you hit, press shift, you'll lunge. And I'm lunging upwards. And I got through it. And normally these doors would be a big problem, but I have a key. There we go. Got this key. And I made it through, and that is game over. I One person survived, one of my squad mates is dead, and I managed to kill all these people. And it only took me one day, 12 hours, 20 minutes. So this was a very great escape, but because um, it wasn't fast and I didn't kill very many people, but I did manage to escape. I only managed to escape with my best friend dead forever. So, I mean, I have that to look forward to, which is nice. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!